it's so close. Yes. Can I make a start, please? Surely. Um, we are. Um, we haven't had apologies yet from Andrea or Davis, so we'll, if they turn up, they'll turn up. But um, it's seven o'clock, so we'll make a start because it could be a very busy agenda. But before we start our formal meeting, Esther wants to give us a, an update. Or Just a brief of where we are at the moment. Thank you. Uh, which is for public consumption. Yes. Even though we only have one member of the public. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry that doesn't show disinterest. I'm sorry, yes, but uh, okay. we, we are interested. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you, Chair. I'm um, going to move around the corner so we can see what you're saying. I've done a brief presentation. Most of you will probably know where we are up to now because obviously I've seen most of you anyway. Um, unfortunately, Duncan's not here this evening, um, so it's left to me to um, go through the presentation. Um, this, you can see that the steps so far, um, what we've had to do, were, you know, rather a lot. We're looking back at December 2013, um, when the Housing Enabling Team carried out the Harry Housing Need Assessment, um, which showed uh, a need for eight, um, which was when Brent Long were interested in what, what they could do to provide affordable housing in their village for locals. Um, April 16, um, we carried out a desktop assessment of the preferred sites of those that we brought forward to the Parish Council. This is just a brief resume of how we've got to where we are now. Um, <clears throat> June 2016, um, the Parish Council confirmed that Station Road is our preferred site um, that will provide not the total amount of affordable housing, but uh, something towards <coughs> how affordable housing is required in the village. Um, once we'd done that, we came up with um, a brief and initial layout of what we had so far, um, and we put it to a public consultation um, to provide feedback on um, this preferred site at Station Road. And then in September 16, um, we decided that we would carry out a further housing need assessment as requested by Brentnell Parish Council because it had been a few years since what had been done. Um, the findings were reported to the Parish Council in December, and then February 2017, um, a revised layout taking into account all the concerns from the public um, was, was brought to another public consultation which was held here in this room, um, and Brentnell Parish Council posted the, present the um, consultation. April 17, we presented an update of the project again um, to the annual parish meeting, which was a request from the chair for uh, Duncan to do that at your annual parish meeting, so that was an update um, again. June 17, we had the inception meeting of the Station Road Housing Steering Group, which a few of you are members of, and that was to look at the Community Housing Fund, and rather than bringing it each time to the parish council, we could meet in between um, to get things rolling a bit quicker. Uh, July 17, um, the Parish Council confirmed the acceptance of the community, community housing fund that we've spoken about within the steering group um, to carry out feasibility studies, an initial feasibility study on Station Road. And then November 17, we carried out another consultation from the amended layout again um, that had come out of the consultation. So that's quite a few steps we've taken in between. It's surprising what we've done really. <clears throat> I'll give you an update as to where we are with the housing needs survey. Originally it was 10, you can see back in 2013. When it was updated again, we have uh, 11 rented accommodation required, and you can see the mix across the board there, um, with another three intermediate. Again, this is just a snapshot in time for those that actually filled out the form, um, and for us to look at the forms and generate this number of need um, in Brent Knoll. Um, so going back to June 2016, we had this layout at the public consultation, um, which was very basic black and white form, just what it may look like with the, um, I think it was 18 homes on this site. Um, and following the consultation, um, the feedback from that was, it's 51% um, was for the building of the market homes to subsidize the affordable. So we're talking about cross-subsidy P4 model because it's an exception site outside the development boundary. Um, there's an almost equal split of people that supported the station road and didn't support the station road. Bearing in mind there was a lot of people from station road actually at the consultation itself. 
Um, the question about whether there was any other suitable sites um, was asked at the consultation. 71% um, of respondents didn't know of any other sites in Brent Knoll. Um, there were, the concerns came out with the highway safety, the drainage and flooding, too much parking, too many homes, and the homes should meet sort of the local vernacular of what they may look like. So following that, we came up with another consultation. <clears throat> So what we had here was, we didn't have any feedback per se to this consultation, but we just put a few, three suggested ways of looking at the site forward um, for people to come and have a look again. Uh, uh, we'd listen to what you'd said and this is perhaps what it may look like now. So what they said was, um, <clears throat> the majority of the community were quite positive actually to this correspondence. Um, this, consultation it was like people that came in said well you've listened to us you've changed it you've reduced the numbers on the site the highway safety concerns was still a concern um, with traffic coming out onto station road which would have been picked which will be picked up in the survey that we've had done um, the drainage and flooding again people were saying about the field flooding and there was issues about the drainage and the rings around the field and the appearance of the homes came up again about the boundary treatments and how it fits in with the local area. So we now have, following that November consultation, which is in the briefing note this evening, um, some of you will have seen this, some of you won't, is that we've had the survey back from the transport and highways um, feasibility that we have done, and they, the, they have recommended as well as the community have recommended that Station Road is probably not a viable option for the um, road here, coming in, which is where it was before. And they've had a look at the Brent Street entrance, which I think this is the Manor House? Yes. The oh, Manor. Manor. So as you look at the street, you can see that you've got the 45 metre visibility display, which is standard Somerset County Highways visibility. Um, and this, the layout of the site looks a little bit more friendly, I would say, if that's a word to use. Um, I'll be picking up on this later on in my briefing, um, and this will be available on the website. <clears throat> so we also talked about the um, project timetable with the steering group, about how we were going to move forward and the dates um, we're looking at. So this evening I'm here at the Parish Council, um, just giving you an update on the new layout and what's been going on. February 2018, we're hoping to post um, an invitation into the Brent Knoll News about a public drop-in drop session, again because it's changed so much, um, the um, layout. 7th of March, we're hoping that's when it's going to be, we're going to use hopefully the... Um, the public session before the meeting um, so that people can come along and have a look and discuss things with us and Carters again and then possibly a submission of a town and country planning act in spring but again it's all possibilities but the timetable again will be in the briefing note that I do earlier later any questions from there? <coughs> Are you still building with many? Are you still hoping to build 14? There's 15 there 15. on the site at the moment. Yeah. Yes, 15. It's been oh, reduced yeah. from 18. Yes, yes, I know, but still too many. Right. Still too many. I know you're going to move the road, or you propose moving the road, but it's still too yeah. many. Yeah. Well, the 15 on the site, um, which is the, the rec recommended number for the site in respect of space and amenity space, and the rain that's surrounding it and the yes, road. Which gets flooded, because our garden last week got flooded when we had that rain. Which is, you know, this is why the, drain, drain. the drainage study mm -hmm. will pick that up and the mitigation yeah. will be presented. I don't know if this is appropriate time to say, but on Wednesday the 27th of December, I drove down here by the manor, the whole road was completely flooded. Yes, apparently so. And yes. I thought, thought they had sorted that out, but obviously oh, not. Yeah. We had flooding. Yes, I mean, the flood, the flooding issue will be picked, 
as part of a um, planning application, Wessex Water will have a <coughs> say on the on what drainage and the feasibility. So the drainage survey, I couldn't bring this evening because they're just in the process of amending it. Um, but it'd be open for people to have a look at. Um, obviously, it's, it belongs to the parish council. Um, and they will have looked at all the drains. I know they've done the CCTV work on all the, the drainage. <clears throat> I know there's an issue with a culvert somewhere. Um, but all that's going to be taken into consideration and they're looking at it. And I know they've done some work, haven't they, in Brendan Old already? Yeah. So it's like an ongoing, when, when it's an ongoing the, thing. All the roads were flooded over Christmas. The drain, the ditches were as low as could be. They were letting it out to sea. It was just being held up by the block drains. Mm. So, I mean, this is something, I mean, I'm not a drainage expert, unfortunately. No, we'll see how can so, we can well. see, you know, we will be able to see what, what happens with the, with the survey that comes out. I think that's, that's an issue that we need to really yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about drainage to be able to answer the question because that's not, that's not my, my bag, unfortunately. Are there any other points anybody would like to ask? No, I feel like that it's too many. It, it, yeah. uh, say 10 at the most, but 15 is too many. Okay. I think that comment should be raised when the, when the planning application comes yes. forward. Yes, mm. yeah. But anyway, thank you for that, Esther. That's okay, no problem. Yeah. Thank you, kindly. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Were you wishing to say anything in the non public section? Yes, I've got a briefing mm -hmm. note to mm -hmm. up <coughs> because I've got a few um, questions and answers for the. Thank you. Just <coughs> double checking. Yes. Do you want me to talk when the planning, you're discussing no, the application? No, no, the public have a right to, to address the council for two minutes before we have our formal meeting, and during the formal meeting, it's a, a meeting of the council. Okay, I'll put it down. public to discuss. So if you give us your name and why you want to tell us what you'd like to talk about, please. Good evening, I'm Mark Warren and I'm the I'm representing the applicant with regard to the Planning Commission at 111, the Weavers. Yeah, right yeah. straight in the Opposite here. Got where we are? Yes. Yeah. Good. The background to this application is the changing circumstances and relationship combined with the desire for individuals to remain in the village. The proposal is to reduce the width of the property known as Weavers to allow access to the garden that lies behind and is also accessed via the lane off Brent Street to the northwest of the property. Nationally, there's a housing shortage for both properties for sale and for rent, and as Brent Knoll is also a popular village, there is considerable demand for houses. The applicant would like to occupy one of the properties, and we have serious interest from two older couples who are interested in renting units on a long-term tenancy as they wish to return to the village having moved away. Having gone down the pre-app route with the LDC, the principle of development on the site is not opposed, subject to meeting some design criteria. The land lies within the development boundary of Brent Knoll, which is defined as a key rural settlement. Policy P5 of the core strategy provides for housing proposals for redevelopment, infill, subdivision and conversion, provided it meets the following criteria. Not involve the loss of space or facilities which contribute towards the character and role of the settlement. Is appropriate to the scale, design and existing character of the settlement and would not harm the character of amenities nearby. Most people are unaware of the extent of the grounds of 111, so it clears the first hurdle. Brent Knoll has an array of housing types and styles and no discernible type of standard. And we've tried to design a layout which achieves all the criteria we were set and is not over development. The four units behind have been designed with end users in mind and could be seen as custom build rather than self build. The gardens are not large, but the potential tenants do not wish to be burdened with grass cutting. <coughs> in creating a design, we try to ensure the properties do not overlook the adjoining houses and gardens and the internal configuration is such that much of the activity will be to the rear. 
highways, because of the wide road frontage, access to the highway is not an issue. Indeed, compared with the recent consent given to the house for the rear of 115, the access is substantial. Car parking, LDC asked us to provide three for three parking spaces for the rental and four for the house with the annex. Flood risk, topic for Brent No. Um, front part stands in flood risk two and rear and flood zone three. Design of properties is to address the potential risk of flooding. Foul water will be pumped from collecting point to the main road sewer and surface water will be collected and held in a professionally de designed attenuation and holding tank system. And some will be reused as grey water and some released to the rear into the rear, which will also be cleared. Landscaping and ecology, rear garden is well screened, there's a few mature trees which will be retained. We've not carried out a bat survey as the habitat is not significant for roosting or breeding, but we would anticipate a full reptile and amphibian survey in due course. There is a covenant pertaining to the land, but it's poorly drafted and inconsistent in that it states the areas uh, green should not be used other than for agricultural redevelopment. And it makes reference to a northwest boundary that gives details of a, a no build zone that isn't on land owned by the applicant. <coughs> in summary, this is an application that involves three, three long term village residents and has the potential to increase three additional rental units in the village for which there's undoubted demand and, when, and will bring additional numbers to the village, which means more potential users for village amenities. Thank you. Did you, did you, did you want to say no, no, you still. <coughs> Spoken on my behalf. Right. With that, can I make a start, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, for those I haven't seen, Happy New Year. No apologies. Uh, can we have declarations of the cumulative or personal and prejudicial notes? Yes. So, so, triple O two four and triple O thirty one personal prejudicial. Which is personal. Well, one of them is personal and prejudicial. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> one person. Personal, I should think. Yeah. Okay. Mine. Bella. Um, the orchard, Burton Road. Personal. Okay. Uh, the normal personal interest in terms of my role on Section 1 and Canton yeah, yeah. and on all the planning stuff with my role as member of the planning committee. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, David. Brian Nance, payment to J.P. Mayer. Brian Nance, J.P. Mayer, payments. I have a personal interest on 32 and 33. And Colin is going to chair the meeting at that point. Anybody else have any personal interest? On the personal interest, of course, you can remain in the meeting. No problem. You're not participate. Prejudicial you need to leave my interest. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Right. Mm. Okay, thank you. Right. Everything is that all Declaration. Have any sort? Okay. Right, so moving, do you want to Oh no, we've got the oh, yes. uh, sorry. Yeah. 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 It's the new year, you know. Goes fast. <coughs> right, we've had a set of set of minutes distributed. Anybody got any objections to the minutes as set now? Or can we accept them as a true and accurate record? Yeah. I have a seconder. Uh, all those in favour? <coughs> Yourselves, as they say.
Yes. Um, yeah. 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 Is it that device up there? That's better. Better. If we zoom, if we, we go, can we zoom? Is that better? That's better. Yes, that's better. Small. We zoom down a bit. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Right, Joe, this is a, a briefing note number eight, um, just to keep you up to date with where we are and what, we, what work we've carried out with the steering group. Um, contact details at the front. I haven't had time to circulate this today. Unfortunately, it's been we've lost two members of staff um, and it's been a little bit busy at work. Um, but what I will do is email it to, to you've got a copy of it now, <laughs> and it will go on the website again. Um, an update on the Community Housing Fund. Um, the £30,000 Community Housing Fund um, that was awarded to Sedmouth District Council um, and Brent Noel Parish Council have agreed with £30,000 to be used for E.G. Carter to look at the feasibility studies on the station road. <clears throat> and the amount of the Community Housing Fund that um, E.G. Carter were looking at was £29,664, which was set out um, in the letter to the Parish Council as to what feasibilities were carried out, how much they were and who they were done by um, for the land on the station road. So going on to the feasibility investigations, um, to date we have most of the reports done um, and the, the acoustic survey and the landscape design will be done as part and parcel of the planning application so they're not really um, a part and parcel of what we've had up to now. Um, the drainage survey I was talking about earlier, um, the CCTV works um, with the existing surface water networks being completed and the internal drainage board are now looking at um, the further surveys and the modelling of the drains to prevent any more issues with the development itself affecting you know, the surrounding areas. So on the 6th of December, um, we had a design team meeting held at the um, um, Housing Association offices, Southwestern Housing Society, that um, are an adult board looking to take on the affordable properties. Um, at Station Road. Um, it's, it's chaired by Norman Rock Prime uh, Construction Consultants um, and South Western Housing Society, E.G. Carter and Company, who are the contractors, the architect, and us as an affordable housing team go to the meetings. Um, and the principal function is to, to project manage the meeting, um, and they're responsible for making sure that everything comes together um, for the delivery of the scheme. So there was a few things on the agenda, I've just named them, I haven't expanded any further on them. Um, the main topic of discussion at that meeting um, was the feedback from the consultation um, and the highways survey that we received because of the um, issue with Station Road and the traffic. Um, so at the back of the report there's a revised layout which you've already seen but I'll show you later on. So the latest proposals, um, <coughs> due to the constraints and solutions flown from the feasibility investigations for the highways issues and the traffic survey, um, and the issues from the members of the public from the public consultation, um, what they've looked at is they've um, looked and amended the initial layout um, and changed the entrance from Station Road <coughs> onto Brent Street. Um, the reason they've done that is, is mainly because of the um, public and mainly because of the highways issues. Um, the new layout is um, still maintaining the 15, um, which keeps the um, optimum amount of affordable housing that we were going to have on the site at 60%. Obviously we had to go back to the landowner because it incorporated an additional piece of land um, from the landowners. Um, which they've now agreed, they're happy that we take that additional piece of land um, <clears throat> at no further cost um, and the option agreement has now been signed on the land which means now that it's in control of E.G. Carter um, for a set period of time. 
<coughs> the site has also um, been to the internal development group here at Sedgemoor District Council, um, which is a group where we look at um, planning policy, we look at, uh, we have um, a consultant highways expert come in, we have our conservation officer, we have the, what we call the landscape officer and the affordable housing team and development management all looking at the planning application to give some informal feedback of how they feel the, the new amendment you know, is. So they've had a look at it, they're happy that um, Brent Street is a positive solution to the issues for urban highways. Um, the urban designer felt, he's called an urban designer but he looks at all the designs um, that we take to the um, group, felt the layout's much improved with the change of the entrance and the highway consultant felt the new entrance would mitigate any issues on Station Road so, and would mitigate the highway survey that we have done. <coughs> so this information then was taken to Brentall um, Steering Group. Uh, we met on the 19th of December which was a bit of a quick get together meeting <coughs> because of the, the changes to the layout. Um, we, they, we updated the group on the design team meeting held. Um, Paul Gardner updated them on the constraints and the solutions following the feasibility studies. <coughs> the project um, group agreed the new layout, felt that it was a better solution um, to the site. And a project timetable was agreed, which I went through earlier on, um, for a drop-in session to be held for the public to have a look at what, what 